Uh, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to the channel today again with Stephen Cornett at Nature's Always Right. Uh, we're going to show you how he makes his soil mix. So this is something he uses for his transplants, his propagation, his soil blocks. And it's a question that I think a lot of home gardeners get all the time or ask all the time, especially on the comment section on the, on the website. So I figured let's just show you how someone who does this for a living actually makes it. And you can use that recipe at home and it's going to work absolutely wonderfully. So let's go ahead and get to it. Good. All right, guys. So for my, my potting mix, my main potting mix that I'll use um, for, so I'm going to start my tomatoes, cucumbers, and squash in these 800 milliliter pots. I like these because they um, are pretty deep. They're about five inches deep, you know, three, four inches across. It's a nice uh, middle ground size. I like them better than six cells because you can let the plant get a bit bigger before you toss it on the ground. Um, so for my mix, I do like a pretty standard mix that a lot of people do, which is so you can just you just remember one third, one third, one third, or thirty percent, thirty percent, thirty percent. So I'll do thirty-three percent compost. This is the compost that I've made from my chickens, and I actually um, now I use all my own soil that I'm that I'm creating here on site. So I will take thirty percent of this. I will use thirty percent of peat moss. Peat moss is um, and adds more organic matter. It's very good at absorbing. Um, water and retaining water. And then I use perlite. Perlite is the other one there. Perlite. So you'll see this perlite if you ever go to a gardening store, it's in all the potting mix. And what this does, it's um, an expanded rock that they heat up and it pops like popcorn. And it just creates a lot of little pores and water is able to, to run, water and air is able to actually go through this. So it, it allows, you know, aeration to the roots and when you, it prevents overwatering, essentially. Okay, so I do 30% of each. Now, how, do, how am I going to measure that, right? We, we need a really simple, easy way. So if we use ratios, we can do that. So because we know it's one third of each, I just need a bucket of any size. And this is my measuring cup. So if I need one third of each, then I would do one five gallon of perlite one five gallon of compost and one five gallon of peat moss. But if you're going to do a smaller mix, you could use one gallon. You know, if you use the ratio, you just upsize to whatever you're working with. So for my potting mix, that's what I would do. So I'll just add this. How long is it taking you to, to turn a compost pile and get it over here so it's ready to be used? Uh, it takes me about three months. Okay. And, you know, I do a thermophilic composting. So I'm raising all of my compost temperatures to between 140 and 150 for like, I try to do it for four to five days. And if I'm able to, I turn it after a week and then try to raise it back up again to 140. Sometimes you can't quite make it. It goes to 130, but you want to stay at those higher temperatures for a few days at least to kill weed seeds and pathogens. And then it breaks down quicker. When my pile goes cold, I add red worms. And here's a couple right here. There they are. So I basically turn my compost pile into a worm processing center after that. And they eat the remaining organic matter. They add to their digestive system. They add more beneficial bacteria. Um, they just help to break down whatever's left over. So that's what I like to do once it goes cold and I just use them to do more work for me. Yeah, you throw them in as like the cleanup crew basically. Yeah. yeah. And then when I'm adding my compost anywhere around the yard, there's always a few worms in there. Now I'm inoculating the ground with more worms mm. and then they can kind of proliferate in the ground more. So I highly recommend that. That's why I, that's why worms are such a big part of my system. <laughs> and I even have a worm bin back there that I can use. Uh, I can mix in worm castings in with this mix as well. It's another thing I could, could do. All right, so we've got our mix. Now, I always strain my compost. Just in case there's some unbroken down stuff, right? Yeah, and I noticed that germination works a lot better when there's not like some random rock or big chunk of stick. Yeah. Sometimes it creates an air pocket or something goes on. So you'll see how nice it becomes once I strain it. And because I made this myself, um, you know, there's some random twigs that got in there from my pecan tree, whatever. All um, commercial guys, they all strain their compost. So this is just a simple strainer. I use um, quarter inch 
believe it's a quarter inch mesh um, hardware cloth. So then I'll just use my shovel to kind of mix it. And if you guys want to see a really cool soil strainer, um, if you look at uh, Roebuck Farms, it's a farm in New Zealand, they have a cool one that actually is like elevated above the ground and it's connected to a chain and they shake it back and forth. And then it dro drops straight down into their bucket or-, or Even less labor, it's right? even less labor. Yep. So this is, this is a little bit annoying, but it, it gets the job done. Yeah. You do it by hand. It's a little faster, but then I'm bending over and it hurts my back. So I try to do most of it with a shovel. But I know, you know, it takes a little extra time, but it makes your potting mix so much better. Mm. You'll have better germination, you'll have better growth um, in general. So how much do you think you end up losing to just it being debris? You'll see. In a five gallon. <laughs> yeah. Um, Not too you know, much. Ten, five to ten percent maybe. That's, yeah, that's a but good. But I'm losing mostly, it's like rocks and yeah. big sticks like this. What do you end up doing with that stuff after? So, you know, it's, what I assume is that these are all filled with nutrients. So yeah. then I'll, I'll just dump it under the shrubs or under mm. my trees. Mulch. And it becomes yeah. mulch. Okay. That's it. So we are fully screened now, and you can see the difference is absolutely incredible. Everything is uniform. I mean, you could almost plant straight into this yeah. if you wanted to. Easily. And now we are going to add the peat moss and the perlite. Yep. And you strain that as well? I do, just because some of the per, uh, peat moss, there's like leftover sticks and weird stuff in there. Mm -hmm. So I, I do strain that as well. And do you strain the perlite? Um, no, I don't train as the perlite, but if I had some like a larger chunk of perlite, it'd be a way to break it up more. Okay. But I try to get the medium to fine perlite because that works better for germination. And is it, it's yeah. more expensive the smaller you go, right? Yes, I believe it is. Like this bag right here was 15 bucks. And that's what, 50? It's a um, four, four cubic something four cubic feet, feet. Yeah. yeah four cubic feet that's not that's not a bad price that's a good price yeah i mean even if you're a home gardener you could buy that size and use it over Lots the course of, of a few years yeah and that's 15 dollars yeah. instead of going to the store and buying a one liter of it for 10 yeah, bucks or something exactly. like that yeah it's price buy both yep yep all right so we're doing what's the uh, peat moss brand that you buy sunshine okay sunshine they also make um, different potting mixes as well. Yep. I think Curtis Stone uses like number three or something. Like I, this. I think he, yeah, I think something he uses it for his microgreens. For his micros, yeah. yeah. And he, he'll he screen that mix as well. Yeah, yeah then he screens it. Yeah. yeah. Screens it. I guess for the peat moss, it also makes sense to screen because there's sort of yeah, moisture like, chunks in there too that you can't yeah, break up, that's right? That's a great, that's a great point. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes like when you're making your mix, they just, they just don't break down unless you like physically yeah. do that to them. Right. So, so you might as well do it in bulk on a screen. Right. So here we go. This should be a, a lot faster too, because it's all uniform yeah. or uniform enough. So when you're making a full batch yeah. of this stuff, how much are you actually making? Full wheelbarrow full? Um, normally I just do the, this five gallon batch like this because okay. I have to mix it. And when I mix it, um, I don't want the stuff to spill out the side. Oh, right, sure. So you'll see once I add it all, it's, it's quite a bit. And that's enough, how, so it'd be 15 gallons of material, right? Yeah, and then, so with that much, I made like all of these pots. And I just propagated a bunch of cuttings to mm -hmm. with one wheelbarrow. Yeah. That's decent. So at this scale, at this farm size scale, that's this is okay. pretty much all you need, yeah. Yeah, I, you know, in the future, it's something I, I probably would like to, to upgrade, but there's but, more important things right now to take care of. Yeah, totally. And all of this should go through. There shouldn't be any too much left over. Yeah, there won't be much. And whatever's left over is like perfect mulch. Yep. Because it's, it's just, basically ch wood chips, right? It's just little wood chips. Yeah. yeah beautiful mulch. I'll throw those over on the grapes, probably. All right. That's all right. It. That's yeah. all that's left. Not that much. But About two handfuls. are annoying, so. Yeah, because those those would take up an entire cell. They'd go across an entire cell, planting right. cell, right? Yeah, yeah. 
totally messed things up. Yeah. So I don't want that. All right, dump this baby. Last major ingredient is the perlite going in. Probably the easiest one to do. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. dust storm, dust yeah. storm. Yeah, don't ah. breathe. You don't want to breathe this dust. Guys, I'm dying for the cause right now. I'm getting caught in the storm. <laughs> All right, let's take let's take a quick walk. Woo! <laughs> Should have warned you. About that. <laughs> All, All right. right. So, hazard hazard on the farm. All right, here we go. Here we go. So now we got one third. <laughs> so you can use this mix for even a even soil blocks. I find it works well for soil blocks though. I usually um for soil blocks I'll usually do like half half a thing of, of perlite uh, just because I find that it makes the blocks a little bit better. They, they hold together better. Got it. If there's too much of these in there, there's not as much like glue to hold. Yeah, together. it'll start breaking apart, right? Yeah. yeah. So, I like to mix it with a, uh, I wanted to say broad part, a pitchfork. And I do that because it all falls through. Mm. So I'll do my first mix like this. So it just make, all you need to do is lift up. It mixes yeah. itself. Yeah, I just give a little shake. The thing I like about the way you farm is the way you approach labor. I mean, even something as small as this, you've thought about how to minimize your own effort. Yeah. You know, most people are going to be like digging in and turning it with their own or their muscular effort, and you're just sort of picking it up. Yeah. Very simple. Yeah, I'm always trying to think of new ways of making things easier for myself, and all you know, all my different mentors and teachers. Or books I've read, you know, it just it's about minimizing your labor. Yeah, want, especially wanna, if you want to do this for a lifetime. Yeah, I, I want my body to be good. I want to have, you know, so like having good posture when you're working is important. Yep. So and then um, I mix, do the initial mix with that. I come in with a straight edge at the end because a lot of the, the compost or the perlite will get kind of get stuck at the bottom. It doesn't mix. Okay. So you'll see when I go under, when I turn this over. Yeah. There's some of it like this wasn't mixed in well. Yep. So I just like to scrape it a few times. All this is not mixed. Right. So I'll scrape it from both sides. And then it's basically done. And then we've got one special ingredient to add. The final ingredient. Yep. Oh, that's looking just beautiful too. The texture yeah. is amazing. Yeah, that's, and that's where the straining comes in. It just makes this beautiful, soft, luscious. Yeah, let's take a look quick. Uh, I mean, look at this. Let me focus in. That's better than what you're going to buy at a store for sure. A million hundred percent. And this soil's alive. Yep. And we're about to supercharge it. Let's supercharge it. So get ready. Okay, guys. So I'm what I'm starting with this mix is tomatoes, cucumbers, and squash for the summer. And all three of those are any fruiting summer crop, essentially, they need lots of minerals. And they, they suffer greatly from mineral deficiency. So it's my belief that when you find uh, the micronutrients from seed all the way through the plant's life, it's gonna have better pest resistance, better disease resistance. Um, you're not gonna get problems like blossom end rot, magnesium deficiencies, other things that are just detrimental and it'll just ruin your season. Um, so, I want to have the best health of my plant from seed to harvest. So I'm just going to use a little bit of azomite. And azomite, I use the powderized form because it's the most bioavailable. And it's from a volcanic ash deposit. Um, it's just mined and um, it's got like almost 80 different trace minerals. It's awesome stuff. Um, I, I really like it. So I just run that through my strainer. This is, that was about a half a cup a little bit goes a long way with this stuff i bought a 50 pound bag of it like a year and a half ago i'm still using it on yeah. this scale so that'll last you forever forever yeah. so um so then i just push it through because there's always these chunks kind of the same idea as the as the peat moss break up those chunks yep it's done it's done with the strainer okay then i'm going to add a little bit of this is kelp meal and kelp is another incredible micronutrient source and this, this is a fertilizer, it's actually 102, which is kind of interesting. So it does have some nitrogen and some phosphorus, right? Mm -hmm. The last number, yeah. I always forget. I always confuse those two as well, yeah. I don't know why. <laughs> and um, so anyway, with this, this stuff goes a long, long way. So I just use like a small handful. 
Just a light sprinkle. Just a light sprinkle. And then, you know, every little seedling's gonna have like a few pieces of it in there. So the other thing I want you guys to think about is potting soil is also like an inoculant. So I want this to be packed with bacteria, mm. uh, mycorrhizae, and all of that stuff. And all the, back, the soil life likes to feed on stuff like kelp. It likes to feed on stuff like azomite. And so I'm going to add one more ingredient to my mix. Making my mix is a little hard to do in this wheelbarrow because I have to bend over and put my pots in. I'm going to kill my back. So I'm going to put in a tote first. Easy. Okay. And then now I can lift it up to my table where I'm going to make my mix. And, you know, I'm kind of crowded right now. So we'll just set it here. We're gonna supercharge it with some worm tea that I've made over the last couple days. This stuff's been brewing like 72 hours, which is kind of the max that a lot of people do. Usually 24 to 48 is what most people do. And explain uh, explain why it's uh, bubbling and brewing. Oh, sure. So worm tea, it's an aerobic process, which means um, we're trying to grow bacteria that lives off of oxygen. So by aerating it, we're keeping alive all the beneficial bacteria. And so this is my tea bag, and inside of the tea bag is half worm compost, worm castings, and half of my compost I made from my chicken manure. And you add some sugar and molasses, mm -hmm. um, and that feeds bacteria and fungi. I even put azomite and um, some kelp in here as well because fungal growth likes it, and so does bacteria growth. Right. And then now there's minerals that are water soluble in here. So what I can do is take this and actually spray it on the leaves of my plant, and that's called foliar feeding. So the, the leaves of your plant can actually absorb nutrients through their leaves. Mm -hmm. um, spraying this can help prevent pests, disease. It can be used to as, as a natural pesticide. I can use it to spray off aphids. Um, kill two birds with one stone. Spray the aphids off. Get a little foliar feeding going on. Yeah, so it's a beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. Very very cheap and inexpensive but massive benefits. Cool. So we're gonna supercharge my compost, my soil mix with it. So if you're doing 15 gallons in a mix, you're just getting what, like a gallon or two right there? Yeah, just something a, like that. Just a small amount, just to add it in. I just wanna supercharge my soil with uh, micronutrients and soil life, bacteria. Got it. Fungal, All right, let's growth. do it. Add it in. And I always add a little bit of water to my potting mix before I even uh, start putting it in pots just so that um, when I add water to the pots, I don't have to sit here forever and let it water drain. I just water it once and I walk away. Mm. So having a little bit of moisture in here is nice. Usually so this is this is adding the soil biology with the uh, bacteria and fungus, but also moisturizing the soil so you don't have to do as much work, right? Yes. Exactly. So my compost was already pretty wet. so. That's pretty good. We don't have to get too crazy. All right, everybody, that's it. We're finished. Simple, now, easy, inexpensive. Inexpensive. Right. And this is the best soil you could ever get. You can't buy something that's good in the store. No, let's, awesome. let's take a look. I mean, look at this stuff. That is incredible. That's better by leaps and bounds than what you're gonna buy at a garden store. And even if you could find something of similar quality, how much would it cost? It would cost a lot. And it, you know, it's been sitting in a warehouse for, for months. It's been getting hit by the sun, yep. drying it out. Your soil, your life in the soil is dying. Yep. This has been alive the whole time. So now I just add it to a pot, throw a seed in there, and I've got tomatoes. Easy. All right, guys. I hope that was informative. If you like the channel or if you like the video, subscribe to Steven's channel. It's Nature's Always Right. Link's going to be in the description below. Subscribe to this channel. We've got a lot more coming from Steven and from me as well. So. Stay tuned. Good luck in the garden. Keep growing. See you guys later.